thank you for joining with me. We are with Ken Wapnick, PhD, in his journey through the text of A Course in Miracles. And today we are on Chapter 5, Healing and Wholeness. Picking up in guilt. Guilt can only ensue from such irrational thinking as we now read. Irrational thought is disordered thought. God himself orders your thought because your thought was created by him. Guilt feelings are always a sign that you do not know this. They also show that you believe you can think apart from God and want to. Every disordered thought is attended by guilt at its inception and maintained by guilt in its continuance. Guilt is inescapable by those who believe they order their own thoughts and must therefore obey their dictates. Guilt is the inevitable consequence of choosing the ego's disorder over God's perfect order. The unity of father and son. We are accordingly impelled to continually seek out guilt in others and in ourselves for the purpose of preserving the ego's disordered thought system of separation. 58133 The continuing decision to remain separated is the only possible reason for continuing guilt feelings. We have said this before, but did not emphasize the destructive results of the decision. Any decision of the mind will affect both behavior and experience. The mind's decision for guilt can only lead to pain. This leads us to project the guilt, desperately trying to escape its death-draped clutches, but such magical insanity merely reinforces the disordered thought and reflects its suffering in our bodily experience. The only meaningful escape from this vicious cycle is to change our mind's destructive decision. This crucial theme is the heart of Jesus' teachings in A Course in Miracles and the subject of our next section. The decision for forgiveness. We are at the place in the ego myth where the ego has become afraid of the atonement and does its best to drown out the Holy Spirit's still small voice by making up guilt justifying it by our belief in sins that demands that we be punished. This necessitates our leaving the mind where God supposedly, supposedly, excuse me, would find and destroy us to make a world and body. We can recognize in this the double shield of oblivion of which Jesus, of which Jesus speaks elsewhere. Excuse me. The Holy Spirit's gentle melody is drowned out by the ego's tale of sin, guilt, and fear, which in turn is veiled by the world, the two shields being the mind's thought system of guilt and the ensuing projected world of guilt. At some point, we realize there has to be another way and that a true choice does exist. This leads us to another important theme. Prominent in this chapter, the meaning of deciding for the Holy Spirit's forgiveness. 2, 3, 7 through 10. The Holy Spirit is in you in a very literal sense. He is the voice that calls you back to where you were before and will be again. It is possible even in this world to hear only that voice and no other. It takes effort and great willingness to learn. We find here an interesting use of the phrase great willingness because Jesus typically speaks of a little willingness. This concept can be seen elsewhere in the Course too. See for example the manual where the phrase abundant willingness is used. Jesus is telling us that becoming mindful where we were before and will be again takes much work and everyone who studies A Course in Miracles recognizes this is not something we do once. The process of forgiveness requires day in and day out dedication to overcome the resistance to losing our special self. In other words, it requires great 
willingness. And I'm going to stop there. I am sure that you can relate to this as well as I, um, that it does require great willingness and constant, constant practice. And that guilt is useless. Guilt only separates us and keeps us further from the light of the Spirit. I love you. Thank you so much for joining with me. Have a beautiful day, and I will see you tomorrow.